Great. Hi, everyone. Um, today, this video is going to be for Sec 1 for science. Uh, so just a quick reminder before we get started about it. Um, if you're watching this, first of all, this is going to be what I call enrichment. So it means you're not going to be marked on this. You do not have any work to do for it or nothing to hand in. It's only also for you if you are passing science. So if you are failing, remember, you can still pull up your mark by looking at older stuff from term one and two. So don't focus on this video if you're failing. You've got other work that I've sent to you uh, by email. All right, but if you're passing, I encourage you to keep on learning science with me. We'll do a few things with this video today, and then for the next video, we will try to do a lab from my house. We'll see how that works. All right, so uh, if you watched the last science video that I posted, we started talking about biology. If you remember biology, we said, it means things that are alive. So for something to be alive, we said in the last video, it has to have all of these criteria, not just one or two of them. It has to meet all of these to be considered alive. So think about a bunch of things that you know that are alive. Uh, plants, animals, things that are much smaller. Uh, you could probably name a whole bunch. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to organize that. All right. So here are a couple of examples of different living things. I hope my head is not in the way again. I don't think I can move it, but a whole bunch of different living things going on here. There's 10 of them. What I want you to do is look at all 10 of these and decide for yourself, are there any in your opinion that are kind of similar to one another? There's some that are very, very different. For instance, I think a bear is very, very different than a mushroom. Uh, but there's some that are pretty similar. So take a look, think about it, pause if you want. And if you think about it, you might tell me that maybe a couple of ones that are similar are perhaps these ones. Okay, what do the cardinal, blue jay, and emperor penguin have in common? Well, you might say they're all different kinds of birds. Or maybe you'd say these three are similar an oak tree a sugar maple, which is a kind of tree, uh, and this kind of fancy mushroom. Well, they're all plants. Well, actually, wait, is a mushroom a plant? We're gonna find out. But maybe you said these three are similar. That's okay, I'm just asking for your opinion right now. Maybe you said these three are similar. Brown bear, polar bear, both types of bears. Koalas, are they bears? We'll find that out too. Okay, maybe you said these ones are similar. What do these all have in common? This is just a joke. They're all sports teams. So, yeah. Now, here's a question. I just showed you a few. Uh, but how many different species of living things are there? I bet you could name a lot. But how many do you think there are on Earth? Take a guess. And then we'll see how close you were. The answer is... Over 13 billion and counting. It's crazy to think about that amount. But, and why is it so high? Well, a lot of them are really, really small things that we continue to discover. Okay, but just suffice it to say, there are a lot of different living things. And because we've got so many, many different living things, we need a way to organize them. And to, because if we can't organize 13 billion things, it's way too much information. It's kind of like, and I hope you don't identify that with this, but here's a picture of a very, very messy desk. No, it's not my desk. Or maybe it is. Uh, no, it's not. But here's a really, really messy desk with papers everywhere. Imagine if I asked you to find a specific paper here. Good luck. This is why your teachers always tell you to keep your work organized so that you can easily pull out what you need to find. All right? So... With 13 billion different living things, we need a mechanism to organize it. We don't want all our living things to be like this desk, to use this metaphor. So the way we get around that is with the idea of something that I'm going to call taxonomy. And taxonomy has nothing to do with paying your taxes. It just means it's a way to classify things or a way to organize things. And in this case, living things. So what I'll show you, though, to get you started on this is a very different example, just to get you in the right frame of mind for this. So I'm going to take another example that has really nothing to do with 
uh, taxonomy right now. I'm just going to think about another thing where the number is pretty high. It's not 13 billion, but I want to think right now about all of the high school students, not just in our school, but in the entire province. Okay, I want to think about all high school students in Quebec right now. I don't know what the exact number is, but it's obviously a pretty big number. It's not 13 billion, but it's really, really big. Okay, well, if I wanted to divide all the students in, of high school students in Quebec into different categories, what would I divide them into? Well, I like to ask this, and you may know this, but the uh, school boards in Quebec are operating under different languages. So there's the English sector, and there's the French sector. So because we go to Centennial, we are part of the English system. All right, there's also private schools. There could be another branch coming off of here. All right, but I just split it into two categories for now. That's okay. So let's just look at us because we're in the English sector. If I were to break this apart, what level would come next if we, or what category would I come up with if I wanted to sort all the students of high school in Quebec in the English sector? Well, think about it. Maybe the different school boards. So here are a few different school boards. This is the English Montreal School Board, Lester V. Pearson, Riverside, that's where we are. And this is New Frontiers. So there's other school boards. In fact, there's a lot more school boards, but I just have room for these four, okay? But know that there would be more. There could be a lot of branches in this little diagram that I'm drawing, okay? So let's continue here. We're part of Riverside. Now, there's a lot of students in Riverside. I still want to break this up into other categories. So what would I break them up into next? Well, there's many different ways you could do this, to be honest. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to break them up into the four different high schools. There's only four high schools at Riverside, Centennial, Heritage, St. John's, and SLI, St. Lambert International. And that seems like a pretty good way to break up the next group. So if we look for us, we are part of this section here because we go to Centennial. Okay, well, I want to break up this too because there's too many students at Centennial. It's still a big number. Okay, so how would I break this up? Well, maybe the next category is to break it up by grade level. So sec one, two, three, four, or five. And if you're watching this and you're in my class, then you are in sec one. So I could break off all these other branches too. They, I could start dividing these, but I'm going to ignore them for now. I'm only going to look at us for now. We are in sec one. So I'm going to say, how should I divide up the sec ones? There's still a lot of you in sec one. Well, maybe how about by your core class? So there's 10 different core groups in sec one. Here they are. If you're in my class, you're either a photon or a ninja. But now we've actually gotten the number down to be a lot smaller. If I think of my class, there's 23 of you. And if I think of Ms. Nazir's class, there's 23 of you as well. So we went from all of the students in all of Quebec, which is a really, really big number, and we categorized it all the way down to just 23 here and 23 over here. We could keep dividing if we wanted, but that's enough for now. So what did we do? How did, what did we classify? all these students under? Well, the first thing we did was we looked at the province, then we looked at the school board, then we looked at the high school that you go to, the grade level, and the core group. And if I wanted to, I could draw 23 little branches coming off of this and then put each of your names, and then 23 branches coming off of this and putting each of your names, but I don't have time for that, even during these days where we all have a lot of time for stuff. So students would be next. Okay, so this is just a bit of a metaphor uh, that I want you to keep in mind because we sort of do something similar when we try to sort living things. Okay, and that is what taxonomy is. Because there are so many different living things, we need to structure it. So right now, I'll just look at an example. Okay, uh, if we think about different animals, well, here's something we might categorize them by. Are they vertebrates or invertebrates? And you might know what that means. Vertebrates means they have a backbone. Invertebrates means they don't. 
So if we look at the vertebrates category, we could break that down a little bit more. And maybe we could say, ask the question, is an animal warm-blooded or cold-blooded? Now, warm-blooded doesn't mean that their blood is warm per se. It just means that their blood temperature never changes. So you are warm-blooded. Uh, your body temperature inside is 37 degrees Celsius. If you go outside on a hot summer day, your internal temperature is going to stay 37. If you uh, walk to the bus in your shorts after gym class in the middle of winter, like a lot of you do when I'm on bus duty, your internal temperature is still 37 degrees. So you are warm blooded. Reptiles, by the way, are cold blooded. Their, blood, their body temperature will change with the outdoor temperature. So if it's cold, it goes down. If it's warm, it goes up. Okay. So if I want to look at warm-blooded animals, for instance, I could maybe break that down into another category, mammals and birds. We could keep going. And then there's some different examples. So this is what I mean by taxonomy. It's sorting different living things. And to do this the official way, we're going to have to practice our Latin. That's just a joke. I don't know any Latin. I don't expect you to know any Latin. But we're actually going to see a little bit of it. And maybe we'll learn a bit of a language today. Why not? Okay, so here's an example. Uh, if I asked you what this living thing is, well, a lot of you would probably just tell me it's a turtle. And you'd be correct, but you can be more specific. There's many different types of turtles, many different species of turtles. I don't expect you to know this, and unless you're a real turtle expert, but this is what I'm going to call a diamondback terrapin. And you'll notice also when we look at living things, sometimes they have this Latin these two Latin words in brackets, in this case, Malaclemis terrapin. I'm not sure I pronounced that properly. My Latin's not great. Uh, but yeah, you might see that every living thing we can also express in this more scientific sounding two word name. Okay, well, that's something I want you to think about. Every living thing we can do that with. And we're gonna do that by finding out its categories. So we're not gonna sort by province or high school or school board because that's not applicable to these living things. What we're going to start with is we're going to ask for this animal or this living things kingdom. Okay, so we're going to give this the word kingdom. And what I will tell you is that the diamondback terrapins kingdom, as we're going to call it, is animalia. Now you might not be great in Latin, but you can probably tell that animalia means animals. It's in the animal kingdom. Okay, so that's the top level of our classification. The next category that we're going to look at is called its phylum. Now, this is its official phylum, something called core data. Next, we're going to look at its class. So class is just the next level of organization that we come up with, and it's called reptilia. That word looks a little bit familiar. Again, my Latin is not so sharp, but reptilia sounds a lot like reptiles. There you go, turtles are reptiles. Okay, the next level of classification that we're going to come up with is called order. This is the order for this is called testudines. Testudines is a Latin word that means turtle ish. Next, we're going to consider something called its family, then its genus, and then its species. So we just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different levels of classification for this living thing. And I expect you to memorize all of these Latin words. I am just kidding. Do not memorize these. This is way too much information. What I do want you to understand, though, is that for all of the living things we think about, we can look at its kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. These are going to be the standard classification methods in taxonomy. Okay? So that's a lot of information though, too. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That's a lot of words to remember, and they've got to be in that order. So how are we going to keep track of all that information? Well, I asked that question to my students last year, and they came up with a pretty good idea. And what they did was they looked at all the, the letters that start each of these, and they came up with a little sentence to help them remember. And then we drew little pictures, something like this. Can you figure out what the sentence is based on this little image? Well, what we came up with last year when we did this was this. Koalas prefer chocolate over fruit, generally speaking. Now, that's not true. Don't 
if you're at a zoo, do not feed a koala chocolate. This is completely made up. But if you can remember this sentence, you will remember kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species in the correct order. Okay, we've done a few little made up sentences like this before to help you remember these things. So here's another one. All right, so let's go back. This will be the last thing that we do. Let's go back to the 10 living things that I gave you at the start. And now I'm going to give you their kingdom, phylum, order. You get the picture. I'm going to give you all of those. So let's start with their kingdoms. Well, as you may expect, the koala, the northern cardinal, the polar bear, blue jay, brown bear, uh, emperor penguin are all animals. So they all have that animalia kingdom. All right. These two have this other type of kingdom written here, plantae. All right. So they are part of the plant kingdom. They're not animals. You already knew that. By the way, check out the mushroom. It's not a plant. It's got its own kingdom here called fungi. All right. Next, I'll give you the phylums. After that, I'll give you the classes. After that, we've got the order of each of these living things, then family, then genus, and then finally, the last thing that we do, the species. So there's a whole lot of writing on your screen right now, but let's pause for a moment and identify a few things and practice our Latin while we're at it. So here's my Latin question of the day for you. What do you think the word aves means in Latin? I'll give you a hint. Here it is over here. Here it is over here again. And here it is over here. It's the class for the penguin, blue jay, and cardinal. Well, you may have figured it out. It means birds. So if you have any bird, it uh, doesn't have to be one of these three that I've shown you. But if you see any bird outside, it's going to start off Animalia chordata aves. After that, it'll branch off into something else, depending on what bird it is you saw. Okay? Uh, the question that I asked you at the start, which two are the closest related? Well, you can probably see it now. Check out the polar bear and the brown bear. They have the exact same words, Animalia chordata, Mammalia carnivora, Ursidae, Ursus, and then it only changes at the very, very end. So these two are extremely similar. They're the same for everything. The only difference is we have to get down to the very, very last classification to identify the difference between a brown bear and a polar bear. Okay? Uh, and also, a little more Latin for you, Ursidae is Latin for bear-like or bears. All right? The French word for bear comes from that. Urs, urs, kind of similar, I guess. Uh, do we see that for the koala? No. So koalas, even though they're often called so, koalas are not bears. Okay, we've proven that now that we know a bit of taxonomy. All right, so this is a whole lot of writing again. And again, you would never have to memorize this for any living thing. I think it's just useful to know kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. But you would never need to know all this info. Okay. And usually what we do is we only point out the last two levels, the genus and species, the last two. So that's what I was saying before. If you look at a living thing you might have seen before, it has these Latin words in brackets. Well, what they are, are they the genus and the species for each of these? Okay, so think about that. Look up a living thing. Go up. Well, you shouldn't go outside now. Uh, but if you see a squirrel or if you see, I don't know, if you have a dog at home, look up its, look up its uh, taxonomy, its kingdom and so on and so on, and find these two last words, the genus and species. Okay, this is just for fun. If you've seen these old uh, Roadrunner cartoons, uh, they would always introduce the coyote who in these cartoons chases the Roadrunner trying to eat him. Uh, and they would always introduce it with their genus and species, uh, with fake Latin. These are made up words, carnivorous vulgaris and accelerati incredibilis. Uh, yeah, that's just a joke. What they actually are, because these are real animals, but a coyote's actual genus and species is this. And for a roadrunner, it's that. So, uh, but that's kind of fun. So to sum up, 
Uh, taxonomy is the classification of living things. They are sorted into kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And finally, we also learned that koalas are not bears. As I promised you uh, in all my videos now, I'm going to include a bad joke. So here is today's bad joke. What do you mean I'm not a bear? I have all the koalifications. I hope you heard that. All right, so that's the end for today. Uh, make sure you tune into the next video, which I'll try to upload next week. We are going to try to do a lab from my house, as I mentioned. So thanks again for watching. Take care. Stay safe. Let's stay positive. And yes, go wash your hands. Have a good day, everybody.